Good morning and welcome to our worship service here at Redeemer in New Alam. I am Pastor Bodie. And welcome to our members and guests, visitors we may have watching us this morning uh, for our worship service. This is the seventh Sunday of Easter, but our scripture readings this morning reflect on the readings that would be associated to the ascension of our Lord, which was celebrated this past week, 40 days after Easter. We begin with a word of invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to thine infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord, Jesus Christ, O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy on us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you, and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us, and has given His only Son to die for us, and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives the power to become the children of God, and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. We have been present in our sanctuary this day, a few members of our choir uh, and also our organist, and we are going to sing our first hymn. It is hymn number 821 from our hymnal, the Lutheran Service Book. 821, Alleluia, sing to Jesus.
this day is taken from Psalm number 110, selected verses. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies my your footstool. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. We pray our colic of the day. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first scripture reading is written in the New Testament book of Acts, and I read for us from chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, reflecting on the ascension of Jesus Christ. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up. After he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many groups, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times and seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes, and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Here ends our first scripture reading. And we continue with the reading of the Blessed Gospel this day. It is written in the Holy Book of St. Luke, chapter 24. And I read for us verses 44 through 50. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understanding the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be Proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, blessing God. 
Here ends our gospel lesson. We continue our worship with our hymn. It is hymn number 493. We are going to sing verses 1 through 3. Hymn, a hymn of glory, let us sing. Jesus Christ 
once walked. It puts Jesus on the map. There's a place on the top of the Mount of Olives where there's a small chapel. And tradition is, is that that chapel was built over the spot where Jesus ascended into heaven. And if you go there and you have a guide and you're with a group of people, they will usher you into that small little chapel, and there's no social distancing probably going on at that point. You're in that tiny chapel all together. And he allows you to have a minute or two to gather yourself. And then he will say to you, pointing to the floor, and the floor isn't really a floor, I should say that. It's the outcropping of the rock which would be the top of the Mount of Olives. And he'll point to that floor, a mark on the floor, and he'll say to you, did you see that? Do you see that? And you will all sort of look down at that mark, and he will say to you, that's where Jesus' foot pushed off of earth towards heaven. And you, just like I did, if you were there, you will stand looking at it. And you'll probably be like me. You'll probably think to yourself, well, I never really saw Jesus' foot. All I know is that it was crucified. But that mark on that stone does not look like a foot to me. And probably others are thinking the same thing. But then what do I know? The irony should not be lost, though. While we were all looking down that day, the disciples were all looking up on that day. And there's a sermon to be preached in that very thought, that picture. If their eyes were fixed on heaven and our eyes were fixed on earth, then whose eyes were fixed on Jesus? Or we read this in the New Testament. The writer of Hebrews says this in chapter 12. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author, the perfecter of the faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down in the right hand of the throne of God. One of the real treats of standing there on the Mount of Olives is the panoramic view. It is the highest point in that area. The Mount of Olives is probably about 300 feet higher than the city of Jerusalem that lays in front of it. And so you have quite a bird's eye view. You can look down the slope of the Mount of Olives and you'll see the Garden of Gethsemane. And you'll see running past it the Palm Sunday Road. You'll see the Kidron Valley. You'll see the Mount Temple Mount on the far side of the Kidron Valley. And beyond that, you'll see the gray dome of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The church traditionally built over the site where Jesus was crucified and where he was buried. It's quite the sight to behold because it doesn't matter any direction you look. There's a biblical story attached that could be told. And the least of not is that of the ascension. He lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And while blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Somehow I imagine, maybe humorously, Simon and Peter sort of leaning over towards John and saying to him in a whisper, What just happened? What just happened? Jesus had spoken of this moment. He had said that it was necessary for him to go away so that the Holy Spirit would come. 
Now for a time the disciples stood there dumbfounded. They were staring into space. And their eyes were searching the skies and clouds. Then they were looking intently, scripture says, up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him. Earlier in the Gospel of Luke, we read of the women who went to the Easter tomb. We read, while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Now it is the men. The men who are standing in dismay, wondering about all these things. Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. There's an old adage that goes, everything that goes up must come down. Always we live our life with an eye towards heaven but not so much as to miss our very life here on earth. The ministry, the life, the calling God has given us here. God will, Christ will come again. And we will see him with our own eyes, Scripture says. Not the eyes of another, but our own. And he will come in majesty and glory with all the company of heaven. Now in heaven, Jesus goes to prepare a place for you, he said, a home waiting for you. And we on earth, blessed with his Holy Spirit, look out from our lofty mountain grandeur at the mission panorama that is all around. Ambassadors of the gospel. We are sent forth, whether ordained or commissioned, to tell the story of Jesus and his love. Then they worshipped him, and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. May that good news of Jesus fill you with great joy. Some wonderful stories truly are never-ending stories. They are forever and ever, eternal. Stories having hallelujahs without it. Amen. The peace of God was far surpasses all under heaven. Standing, keep your hearts and minds in one true faith and life everlasting. Amen. We continue singing our hymn, verses 4 through 6 of the hymn, A Hymn of Glory, Let Us Sing.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made. Being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this time in our worship, we have our dedication of our offering. We are grateful for those who have remembered Redeemer in their offerings here during the suspension of our worship services in our building. We are grateful for you that have remembered Redeemer with your offerings, with your gifts, and we dedicate them at this point at the altar to the Lord. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. We trust the Lord from thee. And we continue with our prayers. This prayer is titled, For the Nation. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Grant that we remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Grant that we who came from many nations with many different languages may become a united people. Support us in defending our liberties and give those to whom we have entrusted the authority of government a spirit of wisdom that there may be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, may our hearts be thankful and in troubled times. Do not let our trust in you fail. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we would pray together the prayer Christ would teach us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with a hymn. It is hymn number 803, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We do add to the tail end of our worship service a hymn. This is Memorial Day weekend and we remember our nation. We remember our veterans. We remember those who have given their lives. And we remember loved ones too who lay at rest and enjoy the rest of heaven. We sing together a hymn of America, Battle Hymn. 